Hello everyone and welcome back to Kira's Workshop. If you've been following my channel since the beginning, then you know I'm a very conceptual artist. I love creating weird things and strong characters, such as my seven deadly sins, my cherry blossom trees, and my Neptunian alien. Following this love of creating concepts, you might recall the challenge I made back in April of 2019, where I made Thorin, the Barbarian King. I invited everyone who wanted to participate to create a doll using the meaning of their names as a base. I want to start this year strong, so taking in consideration my love for video games, I made up a new challenge slash open collaboration named Final Boss. The rules were very simple. Think of your biggest fear, and with it, create the ultimate boss you would love to beat on your very own video game. To be honest, Thorin was a doll I didn't put much attention on my collection, so I decided to reuse him for this project. I started by sanding down the complete body, because we need to get body mods and a new skin color. I'm transforming this boy into a cold-blooded creature, so first I need to remove the nose, and later patch that with epoxy clay. What's my biggest fear? Snakes. I seriously can't even watch them in picture without feeling goosebumps. Remember that if you're working with epoxy, using water is the best way to smooth the surface and make the sanding process much easier. I'll also remove the ears, and I'll extend them out up the way they were. I'm pulling the clay up to get a very transition, and make the bottom more angular. To give it a more menacing look, I'm using the eyelash viper as a reference, so I'm molding two pointy scales on its side. If you haven't seen this viper, google it up. It's terrifying. I believe that what scares me the most is how angry they always look, and I was so uncomfortable while looking at photo references. For the body, I wanted to keep it muscular but I'm transforming the muscles of the pecs and abs on very angular scales, just like a snake's belly. When I was about to finish sculpting the body, I felt like the face was very human looking, so with camera I decided to accentuate more the mouth, bring the chin down on a point and give it fangs. And this is how it looks. The mouth looks so much better this way. I also gave it a more pronounced Adam's apple, just because. And sand it down to have a seamless transition from the epoxy to the plastic. With the body ready I can begin with the painting. I wanted to have a black mamba color scheme, with some golden accents. Black mambas have a light grey belly, so with a pencil I draw the line where I want the gradient to be. First I'm priming with white. And later, paint on the top with a very grey color I made. Since we all know joints and acrylic paints is the worst combo, I use black sharpie to cover the complete movement where the paint might chip, and later paint the rest of the body with black. I don't know about you, but I love watching the painting process in time lapse. And now that our Viper King looks like Don the Whale from Spongebob, it's time for the body blushing. First, I try to make the gradient from grey to black with black pastel. 
but my black pastel is not that opaque and it's actually more of a dark grey. So I realized this was going to take forever and I wasn't going to sacrifice a complete can of sealant. So I tested something off camera and ended up finishing the body blushing. But let me explain you. I use one of these white makeup sponges and apply black paint to one half and grey paint to the other half. It's really important to use these sponges only. Any other regular sponge may leave some texture on the paint and what you need is for the gradient to be seamless. Once you pack the sponge with paint, start dabbing on the surface. It might look very rough at the beginning, but the key is to pull the darker paint a little down, so it blends perfectly. And since the fabric I'm going to use for the tail is black with bronze scales, I need to paint bronze scales on the torso too. I'm using this sole to do so. Place it on the body, and mix copper and golden paint on the makeup sponge, and paint on top of the tool. And once we remove it, we have our cool scales. And I'm repeating this all over the body. And for the chest, I use a darker green paint. The face up wasn't that difficult, since the majority of it was only working with pastels, I need to paint some angry eyes. First, I'm giving them a base of yellow watercolor pencil. And then, I realized it was going to take forever if I continue using pencils, so I changed to paints. With orange, I'm painting teeny tiny lines. Then, some highlights with golden. And then, a horizontal line just in the middle. I looked at a lot of eyes until I found a design I really liked. And off camera, I added a vertical pupil. For accessories, I'm still into these Mortal Kombat lights. So I got inspiration from a noob cyborg hood. First, I need to have my patterns. I made a sample with regular fabric. Once I figured out what I needed to change, I modified my patterns. And cut the final hood out of fake leather. I'm using this wisp necklace to transform it into a very cool looking face armor. To pop the design of the hood, I'm using hot glue on all the edges. This will also help me to cover up the stitches. using a thin golden wire to add some details and paint the hot glue with the same color of the scales on the body. For the arms, I made two cuffs using fan foam. Which I'll paint black and you guessed it, bronze. Off camera, I made these straps out of fake leather, 
glue them on the middle. And insert the ring through it. I really love how they turned out. To finish the torso, I'm just gluing down the hood and then glue the armor on top. It is a final boss, so it deserves an epic weapon. So I created this very complex double bladed scythe, which I named the Fang Berserker. Here I'm using colors to try to explain the individual pieces of the scythe. Later I trace them on plastic. and cut everything on foam. First, I glued the two pieces of the point together. And later, glue the point to a bamboo skewer. Next, add some wire for an extra detail. And then, glue the blades together. This side, as you can see, has an axe on the back and two blades on the front. I imagine that since this is a viper humanoid, its side inflicts more damage because it's packed up with venom. Now time for some magic. First, two coats of black paint. Then one coat of dry brush with gun metal. Finally, some accents with silver. And at last, time for the tail. I didn't remove the hip joints on purpose, to help me secure better the wire. So that's what I'm doing. Twisting some medium thick wire on the joints. Once both sides are done, I'm twisting them together. Now, I really thought the wire was going to be strong enough to support the doll. Sadly, it doesn't. Even though I didn't use a huge amount of epoxy, the torso is very heavy, so I ended up having to use the doll to stand for it. Here, I'm covering the joints with hot glue, so that the wire is secured. Later, add some aluminum foil to bulk up the hips. I didn't record a lot the process of the tail, because it's seriously huge. This doll is 80 centimeters long. Off camera, I wrap up the wire with some bandages. And secure the fabric on the back with pins. This fake skin fabric looks so cool. Now I'm closing the doll from the front. and sew everything together. To cover up my stitches, I'm using fake leather to recreate the belly or ventral scales, and this will also add so much more to the design. To make the ventral scales, I trace the body on the leather, draw them, Cut them individually and glue them. And since the difference between the plastic and the fabric is very notorious, I went an extra mile and using the snake fabric I cut individual tiny scales so that I can cover those edges. And with this we are done.
Making this project was such a challenge, not only because I suck at molding and do it body modifications, but I also wanted to create a character that could fit perfectly on a video game. You all voted for your favorite name on Instagram, and it was Nethair, the Devourer. And now, time for a small showcase of the work from the artists who decided to participate. What's your biggest fear you would love to defeat during an epic battle? Let me know in the comment section. I also would love to read your opinion on Nethair, as well as its background story. And that's up for today. And as always, don't forget to support the workshop by liking this video, remember that sharing is caring, subscribe if you haven't, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss my new content. Thanks for watching, see you on the next time. Kira out!